right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the card review. So, Burning Abyss. You know them, you love them, you hate them, they're getting some more support. I mean, come on. So, um, you know, I was just going down looking at the cards, and all of a sudden I saw this guy, and I'm just like, ooh. So, as soon as I clicked on him, I saw Ritual Monster, I was like, oh, so that's what they're getting. So, all right, we're going to be looking at this guy. So, this is Malakoda. So, Malakoda. Uh, I'm trying to remember what that is. I mean, if you played the video game, Dante's Inferno, it was like one of the generic horned enemies, except a little bit stronger, but still just, you know, wasn't a boss or anything like that. It was just a generic enemy. And uh, pretty much this guy is the leader of the Burning Abyss, so I think the lore is pretty much um, Malakota and other Malbranches uh, pretty much attack um, uh, Dante and Virgil. So, yeah. So, I don't know why he's working with them, but alright. Anyway, uh, so they get a ritual. So, they got, of course, they got an XC. They got a, um, uh, a synchro with uh, being Virgil. And now they got a ritual. I thought they were going to get a fusion first. You know? Everybody's thinking that, you know, fusion, fusion, fusion. But apparently they're like, ritual! So, of course, uh, let's go ahead and go with this card. So, it's a Dark Fiend ritual effect, level 6. With uh, 2,700 attack and 2,200 defense, so definitely the highest attacking uh, uh, Burning Abyss, you know. Dante, using his effect, he only goes to 25, and Virgil's only 25, but this guy is 27, so... Ooh, higher than the attack barrier, watch out now. I'm gonna run me over a Stardust. Anyway, uh, you can Ritual Summon this card with good and evil in the Burning Abyss. Alright, so... We knew that Burning Abyss were going to get a spell card, you know, it was the first spell card that they were getting. We're like, oh, wow, they're going to get a uh, spell card. Everybody's like, you know, a lot of people are like, uh, is it going to be like a part of Avarice-esque? No, it's not. Well, now we know that it is going to be a, uh, a card that Ritual summons, of course, this monster. Uh, the only problem at the current time that I'm doing this video, I do not know um, what the effect of Ritual is um, on the wiki. It's not there. It's literally in red. You can't, you know, click on it or do anything like that. It's not up yet. So we don't know, uh, you know, what the Ritual requires. Can you only use Burning Abyss? Can you use this? Where can you send it? You know, uh, where do you tribute from? But um, he's level 6, so I'm assuming that we're just going to treat it as, like, you know, a regular, um, um, you know, Ritual monster, and you go ahead and play your Ritual if you tribute, um, you know, it should be 2 Burning Abyss, so you can equate to 6. And of course, when the tributes, they do get their effect because they would be sent to the graveyard unless, you know, something otherwise. But, you know, uh, let's just speak hypothetically. You go ahead and play your uh, Good and Evil in the Burning Abyss, you know, tribute. Uh, two monsters in the field are in your hand. You now they go to the graveyard, they will get their effect. Summon this guy. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and go over his effect and determine whether he's good or not, or whether you should run him, or, you know, how great this guy is. So, must be ritual summon and cannot be special summoned by other ways. So,. Uh, no, you cannot, uh, uh, sir him back. So if he's in the graveyard, can't sir him back. Must be special summoned by a ritual summon. So, alright. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can send one Burning Abyss monster from your hand to the graveyard, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls, until the end of this turn, the target loses attack and defense equal to the attack and defense of the Burning Abyss monster sent to the graveyard this way. So, uh, pretty much he's an attack reducer, so, um, you know, during any player's turn, go ahead and pitch a Burning Abyss, target your opponent's monster, their attack and defense will drop by that much. Uh, the, the thing is, you can use this effect during the damage step, so, you know, you can, you know, if your opponent tries to, like, attack into you with something, like, during damage step, activate my effect and reduce you, you know, uh, I, I believe, can the Burning Abyss monster's effects activate during the damage step? I'm not too sure about that, but I know... Uh, you know, if, of course, the monster that you do uh, pitch will get its effect, so you can be like, all right, well, um, you know, Malakota effect, I'm going to pitch, uh, you know, Graph, drop you by, I think Graph is a 1600 one, off the top of my mind, one of them, it's either Sir or Graph, you know, and drop you by 1600, and then, you know, Graph or Sir's effect will go off, and they'll summon from the, uh, you know, graveyard or deck, so, you know, that's fine. My only big gripe with him is that the Burning Abyss aren't that high in attack. The strongest one they have is 1600. I think. Yeah, I think I think so. I think the strongest one they have is 1600. So, you know, you know, reducing your opponent's attack by 1600 is all fine and dandy and all, but, you know, that's not game-shaking, you know? You know, I mean, what, you're pitching, what, 
Sir, which I think is a thousand. Skarm is like eight hundred. Uh, you know, uh, oh my God, Rubric is a hundred. You know, you're not reducing by that much. You know, it's not like you're going like, oh, uh, Malakota effect. I'm going to go ahead and pitch this two thousand attack burning abyss monster. No, they're generally weak. So his effect is useful, but it's not. You know, oh my God, blow me out the water, freaking good. Definitely not. So. But of course, just like uh, almost every other Burning Abyss, I almost said like every Burning Abyss monster that is sent to Graveyard to get effect, but ah, uh, rubric, rubric, rubric. Anyway, if this card is sent from the field to the Graveyard, you can target one card on the field and send it to the Grave. Okay, so, you know, generally with the whole Burning Abyss theme, they're, they kind of float with themselves. This guy doesn't really float, but he'll give you something back in return. Like, hey, I'm gone now, you know, peace out. I'm gonna send something to the grave, you know, it doesn't say destroy it, it sends it to the grave, you know, depending on, of course, what you're dueling against and, uh, you know, what deck you're going against. It's, the fact it's not too terrible, you know, if it's a mirror match, you probably don't want to send anything. Uh, should all either, you probably don't want to send anything. But, um, uh, you know, if you're going against Cleeput, you know, this guy is sent to the graveyard, you can go ahead and, uh, take that scout and send him to the graveyard. Nope, not that check, put him to the graveyard, so... Uh, you know, that's a play you can do. So, uh, the question being asked here is, is this guy worth playing in Burning Bits? And my opinion, no. He's he's not worth it. He's not, it's not worth, uh, you know, running the ritual spell. And we don't even know what the ritual spell is, but it's not worth, you know, clogging your deck up with the ritual spell. It's not worth ritual summoning it. His effect isn't that great. Uh, you know, I would much rather... Run Rubric and Synchro Summon into Virgil and use Virgil's effect to spin something, you know, back to the deck. Then use this guy who just reduces attack. Ooh, you know, he's he's already 27, so he's already over an attack barrier. So you know, I, if you're really worried about you know, uh, you know, your opponent doing something to him to attack wise, I doubt it. You know, and you know, like I said, his sending effect when he sends it right, right is okay. You know. He's, he's not really floating. He, he can't summon him back with uh, Sir. I, I say no. I say no. In my opinion, no. Uh, so, you know, Burning Abyss, of course, are still getting their support. I love the card art. That card art is badass, but uh, I'm just not seeing it. Just not seeing it. I mean, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below about uh, Malakota, but I'd say no. You know, I'd say, I'd say still, number one, Dante. Number two, Virgil. And number three, Malakota. So, uh, like I said, our Burning Abyss, can we assume that Burning Abyss are just going to get every single type of uh, summon? So, uh, what, in the next pack after this, are they going to be getting, yeah, well, this is Secrets of Eternity, but after that, you know, are they getting, um, you know, um, you know, Fusion? You know, uh, you know Dante Lore, you know, we still need uh, Beatrice or whatever her name is. We still need his woman, Dante's woman, so, you know, maybe they'll do a card of that, but for right now, you know. In the video game and in the lore, this guy is just, he, he's like second in charge, but, you know, he's once again just a generic monster, and like I said, I'm not too impressed with him, you know. Like I said, I'm not sure if they're going to do a Satan card or anything along those lines, but, uh, yeah. Just, you know, Dante's Inferno. It's a book. I think it's a movie. I'm not sure. I know it's a video game, but, uh, yeah. I beat the video game. I beat the video game, like, twice, so, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, Malico, that sounds familiar from the video game, and then I was just like, it's just a generic enemy, like, alright, so, like I said, in the comment section below, tell me what you guys think, uh, definitely when the ritual spell gets revealed, I will review it and determine, you know, whether it has any other effects, if not, I'll probably just, if it's just a, gen really just a generic ritual for, um, Malakota, then I probably won't even do a video on it, but if it has some kind of special effect, like, oh, you know, if you you're, you can uh, ritual summon tribute from monsters from your deck. Then it might get a little bit interesting. You know, that'd be, that would be, that'd be, sound, that sounds really broken. I have to tell you the truth, that's I just blurred with that out of my mouth. I wouldn't give Konami any hints or ideas or anything. But, you know, if you could, if you have this monster in your hand and the ritual and good and evil burning bits, you can, you know, tribute monsters from your deck as the cost. Then that sounds a little bit broken because that would just, you know be super consistent you just be like all right tribute scarm tribute sir summon this guy they're gonna go off summon them you know that would just increase your consistency like craziness but you know i'd, I'd say no right now with uh malakota i'd say no so tell me what you guys think about malakota and uh 
um, comments section below. Looking forward to reading what you guys have to uh, say. So um, thank you for watching another episode of Card Review. Be back Thursday with another card to look at. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Actually, before we end this video, I'm an idiot, and I totally forgot that this might actually change how Burning Abyss is played if Burning Abyss players decide to play it. And what I mean is that, of course, uh, not only can you go tour guide summon a Burning Abyss, but you can also go tour guide summon Dijin Releaser. And as you guys know, some of you guys might know with Dijins and Nethclops, yeah, Releaser is very powerful, you know. And with the high chance of Vanity's Emptiness getting hit, you know, that's another just Vanity's Emptiness. So, you know, they might they might try that. You know, they might go ahead and try, uh, you know, tour guide, summon that, you know. And then generally serve. Go ahead and play Ritual, banish that, summon your, uh, your, uh, fuck, what's his name? <laughs> I forgot his name. Uh, Malakota, and, uh, you know, just go to town with a nice 27 beater that, uh, you know, your opponent can't special summon, so, you know, the struggle might be seriously real. Seriously real. So, um, you know, I just need to make sure that I mention Digital Releaser because, for some odd reason, it just wasn't coming to me. I'm like, ah, oh, no, 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 I'm not even thinking about him. But, you know, Tour Guide, Digital Releaser, and it's kind of obvious. So, you know, if Burning Abyss decide to go ahead and go down this route, uh, they can, because this, this uh, ritual monster existing can be a new way of play for Burning Abyss, you know. Well, with Virgil, it really didn't change the play much, you know. There's still an like, C-based deck that just happened to have a tuner who can, you know, synchro summon into Virgil. But besides that, the deck is still exactly the same like, C-based. But, you know, with uh, Malakota, you know, we can possibly see some ritual play, some, uh, some a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, Dijin Releaser. Maybe some preparation is right, so maybe we can actually see the deck change a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Alright, now I'm going to uh, end the video. So, like I said, if I want to hear what you guys have to say about this guy in the comment section below. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And see you guys next, no, next video, this upcoming Thursday, with another card review. Alright, thanks for watching.